Hi and welcome to the channel. Uh, just a quick video. This is the Yaesu FT920. Now this has come in and it didn't have any audio. It, everything seemed to be functioning reasonably well. It had a problem with transmit. Um, I've drilled down into it and it's the DSP uh, unit. Now I think it's quite important to make this video because uh, there's a couple of issues with this and I notice on forums that people have had problems with the DSP and they're thinking it's the IC. So let's just talk a little bit about the radio. These are an HF and 6 meter transceiver. Uh, this was manufactured I think right about the early 2000s. Um, very popular. It was the sister uh, rig to the um the f it's the ft 1000 uh, mp um and you know they're a bit of a plastic fantastic radio um i don't know some people have described them as you know phrasing alan sugar a bit of a mug's eyeful um there isn't a great deal inside them um which we'll see in a second but there's plenty of features, and to be fair, it actually performs quite well. I, I used to have one of these myself, and I had many uh, good contacts with it, and uh, quite enjoyed the radio. So, yeah, they're not a bad radio, uh, even though sometimes they get a bit of press. But the filtering's reasonably good on them, but quite selective, and um, yeah, as I say, they do work reasonably well. So, let's get to the problem. So, the unit came in, we weren't getting any audio, um and basically i drilled down i got down it took me straight to the dsp unit okay so this is the main unit this is the main board that's in the radio we'll take a look at that in a second um but let's just run through quickly how this is working i'm not going to go into any great detail but this is essentially a super hit uh transceiver i think it's a double conversion or possibly yeah possibly through triple conversion with FM, I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't gone that far into it. Um, but essentially, you know, it works as a typical, as a typical super het would. Um, and if we're in receive, um, well, and transmit, we've got a, an array of filters here. Now these are generally, I would imagine these are reasonably wide banded filters as opposed to what you'd, uh, you'd see on a traditional super het. Uh, simply because what happens is the demodulation and modulation is taken care of uh, by the DSP unit, the digital, if I can say it, digital signal processing unit. And so if we just take a closer look at this, you can see it's made up of a few elements. Um, we've basically got this section here. This is parallel information. So we've got some data lines, address lines which are coming up for the main microcontroller on the um, on the main unit. I'm not sure what, uh, they're normally made by um, Hitachi in these things. Um, it could be NEC, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, the information comes out and it basically tells through there, it tells the microcontroller, the main microcontroller tells the DSP what we want it to do. Now, obviously it's got a number of functions it can do you know we can modulate am fm up a lower sideband and uh, it's got all of its methods of doing that um and it'll demodulate as well it'll, it'll do these and you've got all the adjustable bandwidths and all that good stuff that this allows you to do now obviously if we look carefully we've got a main dsp unit here so it's a dedicated digital signal processor uh, a lot these days you can use general um, microcontrollers because they're fast enough um, to do it and we use a you know we can transfer the information using i2s but i'm digressing uh, but basically what happens is we've got tell, we've got the dsp unit here the dsp has a program there's a there's an ic here which is it says rom so it's just an eprom and basically that holds all the coefficients for the filters and um, the general control uh, for the DSP. So it's just code, it's a program that runs and loads the information to the DSP as it requires it. Now, if we look over here, we've got two RAM 
IC, so there's some random access memory there. And that's just simply so that, you know, it, it can store information and then recall it as and when it needs it or modify it. Um, and then the DSP basically com communicates via these buffers here to this bad boy, which is an AK4501. Um, it's a codec, basically. It's an analog to digital, digital to analog converter. So it'll work in you know both both ways. And obviously in transmission, we're going to use um, you know well in transmission and receive you use both both of them. So what we've got, we've got a signals, and I think this is the re receive path here. Our signals will come from the IF, and it will come in here, and get converted into uh, digital information and then gets passed through to the DSP that does its thing um, and then sends the information back out along here then goes you know then it'll go through the digital to analog converter and then it will produce uh, the audio signals and it vice versa it's the same for transmission so What's the problem? Well, if we look at the circuit diagram, this is the circuit diagram for the DSP. Um, as you notice, you can see we've got a main IC here. That's the EEPROM, I believe. And we've got these two ICs here, which is, our, uh, this is the RAM. And then if we look here, that's our main uh, digital signal processor here. So, what was happening is I noticed that it would stop working. And when I say stop working, the unit wasn't in receive, essentially. And it wouldn't work in transmission either. Um, you couldn't, it wouldn't produce any audio signals. Um, and looking at the rest of the radio, it all seemed to be fine. You could see that it was receiving uh, signals, but there was no audio. And, you know, I th immediately thought it's something in the audio path. Well, essentially it was, but it wasn't what I thought it was. The di I, I wound back up at this point. So what I noticed was that in when it was playing up, the, the, the radio was pulling um, 2,000 milliamps, 2 amps, basically, in receive. And when it functioned, it was running at about 1,500 uh, milliamps. So there was 500 milliamps when it was going faulty, going somewhere. And what I did, I noticed that this IC was getting incredibly hot, the DSP IC. So we should, I reflowed it and it started working. And I, it sort of led me up a, led me down a, a rabbit hole. It threw me a bit of a skew ball, if I'm honest. So what I noticed you know, I had a think about it, and we've got this little device here. And if we just zoom in on that, this is an oscillator, and it runs at 66.666 megahertz. They put an extra six on there, but it, that doesn't need to be there. It's a typo. And I took a look at the data sheet on this, and this is the clock. The, the, the unit needs this for the main clock. Um, there is other information it needs, you know, with, you know, um, clocks but this is the main clock and basically what comes out of here you know comes up goes into the ic and that's what runs the ic now i couldn't get to this um and we'll i'll show you in a second and i'll show you what the the problem was and i've got a feeling that you know a lot of people have been experienced because i've seen it on forums people just can't figure out what's wrong with the the unit and they, they wait for a complete DSP unit to come out. And it, it had me fooled. But there was a problem here, along here. It's not producing the 66.66, um, you know, megahertz. So let's take a look at the board. And I'm going to show you exactly what the problem was. And this, I'm really disappointed in Yay. So I've said this in other videos. I the designs and some of the things they do are absolutely diabolical. Why they do it, I don't know, because a lot of the circuits are actually quite good. So let's take a look at the um, let's have a look at the DSP unit itself, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I've, I've just got this in Photoshop. This is a, a, a photo. Um, but if this is the DSP. This is obviously the, well, the top slide. Um, it's not quite mounted like that in the in the actual enclosure. But uh, obviously this is our DSP IC here. Uh, this is our EEPROM and these two um, ICs here, one that's slightly under the EEPROM. That's the RAM. Um, and this is our oscillator here. This is the 66.666M, sign of the devil, because um, it is a bit of a devil. This is where the problem was. Now, it turned out the oscillator was okay. And if we look on the underside here, you can actually see that this is where you know I'll see if I can zoom in sorry about the the quality of this but this is the you know underside of that oscillator and it's a four pin device so this connection here is um there's no connection we've got a pin here which is our v um which is our ground we've got this pin here and I don't mean to see that They've cut a track here. Now, this is the same on all these boards. This has come out the factory. So they've cut a track here, and this is the VCC. And what they've done, they've put a 50, looks like a 56 ohm uh, resistor on there. And then the other pins under this. And you're probably going to well, what's all that soldering? Well, it's a Yesu debacle because basically you've got, I don't know if you can see this, but there's this little bit of tape here. There's also some fibrous. Uh, tape and what they've done they've just soldered a bit of foil over the top and I imagine it's for screening but it is absolutely terrible and what's happening is this is shorting out over time onto the pin because of course the output pin so we've got four pins one two three four the other one's under here and and that's the one that produces the 66 megs and what it turned out to be this has got that fibrous tape under there and what it's doing the pin is shorted through and it's and it's actually connecting to the this solder or this piece of uh, this piece of uh, copper that they've put over the top there really poor uh, very bad design i also had found some really bad designs in the 1000 which i've done in previous videos absolutely terrible design it's a shame because there's so much that's been designed so well about this radio and and the 1000 but it's this stuff like this that just lets it down and of course it makes it unreliable so they've obviously known they've had a problem so they put this resistor on here now i've looked at the data sheet for the device for for this device and it says it wants five volts it doesn't want any resistors or anything on online with it and it's quite critical and i think the problem has been happening and it's probably been damaging the it's probably been damaging the devices so what they've done is rather than attack the problem they've just put a, a resistor on here so that the oscillator doesn't uh, crap out when it shorts out um yeah really really bad you know and I seem to, I know I keep on about it, but I seem to see a lot of this from Yesu. And yeah, it's, <laughs> you make your own mind up, but I, I'm just, yeah, I just, it's terrible. Okay, so this is our main unit here. This is the main board. This is the DSP. Let me look down here. This is where I've removed the foil. I'd show it you, but I don't know what I've done with it. I think it fell on the floor. It's gone into the vortex. I need to tidy the workshop. But if we put the scope probe on here, just put that on there, you can see, yeah, we're getting 66.6 or thereabouts megahertz. And um, yeah, that's it's running. So yeah, little ticking time bomb we had under here. Uh, another little nice little Easter egg from uh, Yesu way back when. I hope they've changed their construction processes because the same poor design uh, was blowing up the thousands as well which is a different issue obviously it wasn't the DSP there it was a problem with the tuner and the switching so I'm going to try and figure out a way I can you know possibly screen this if it needs it um, it's not multi-sided board so I don't see the actual 
the the need for screening it. I know it's be difficult to put a can on it because obviously the small there's a very small lip on here. Anyway, if you watched the video, I'd like to say thanks. Hope you're all well, and we'll see you in the next video.